Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and today, by popular vote, I'm going to show you a way to use OpenSCAD and Simplify 3D to make a two-color object. It's kind of neat. I used my FlashForge Creator and Dual Extrusion to make this, and I'm going to show you how. You ready? Go. Ah, uh, hey guys, welcome back. So if you if you hear some sounds from my microphone, it's because my printer right here out of frame is printing a very special project that I can't tell you about quite yet. But just know it's on the GMAX, so it's going to be GMAX sized. Also, I know I've got my 3D Printing Nerd shirt available, but this, this shirt right here, this is a throwback. My friends and I used to have a startup company called Grazi Mobile. And the idea was through an app on your phone, you could send a drink to a friend who was out and about. You know, have you ever, someone's having a birthday party and you couldn't make it and you felt bad and so you, you thought you'd, you'd send them a drink for their birthday? Maybe you called the bar, maybe you, maybe you stopped by somewhere, I don't know. But the idea was to solve that problem. We didn't get enough funding, but we did have some cool shirts and we sure had some fun times. Well, let's, let's talk about this. So this... This is a pencil box, and it's, it's a Thingiverse model. I'll see if I can find the link and put it in the description. And it uses a small piece of wire as the hinge. Oh, it clicks too, to open and close. It's parametric, so you can configure the size of the opening, and this, and the walls, and the hinge size, and everything. So what makes this interesting is the way in which I printed the colors together. So if you notice, it's white here and it's black right here. I used my Flash Forge Creator Pro to print this and you can tell that the colors are together and in order to get that strength so they wouldn't split apart, I had to do something very special here in the layers and I used Simplify 3D and multiple processes in order to make the whole thing happen. So here, let me show you how to do it. Well, here we are, we're in OpenSCAD and this is the pencil box. I got it from Thingiverse. I don't remember the link right off the top of my head. If I, if I remember the link, I'll put it in the description. But the idea is this pencil box is parametric and you can change the depth and the size and the borders, the, the cutout here for the, the hole that lets you open either side, the, the hinge and the, the hinge elements, it's pretty cool. I was, uh, I, was, I was asked to do a project and this was gonna come in very handy. The idea though, was to take this box and make it two colors. And this was going to be perfect for my Flash Forge Creator Pro because it's a dual extruder. So the idea here was to take this box and take each of these halves and split them up in a way that allowed me to print two colors at one time, but to have those colors also printed together so there was strength in the box. To do that, what I first had to do was cut them in a way that made it so they would fit into each other. And, and here's what I did. I took, I took each, each of the halves, in fact, right here, according to, my, according to my SCAD stuff here, I'm showing the bottom layer, and I'm calling the function show back half. And if I compile this, this is what you see it takes a chunk out of this. So if this is this is the bottom part and here's the the back half of it, it's going to take a chunk out. It's going to leave this line right here. So if I change this to to front half and I compile it again. Oh, that was the wrong one. Oh, here we go cuz it's in the bottom module, of course. No one's ever accused me of writing easy to read code. That's for sure. Ah, uh, there it is. So look at this. So it's the exact opposite. This piece here has, well, it has a little, an insert that goes into the negative space on the other model. And I hope you see where I'm getting at here because this is, this is where it starts to get interesting. If I print this half with one extruder and I print the other half with the other extruder, then it's going to overlap the colors and produce a strong model. Well, here, I've, I've already done this, so let's load everything up into Simplify 3D. 
Here we are in Simplify 3D. You can see that I have the top and the bottom and their halves on my Flash Forge Creator Pro build plate. And well, this is this is where it gets kind of interesting. So what I need to do is line these up somehow. And if I zoom in, I think I can do a better job. Let's see. I'm close. Ah, I think that's it. That looks well that looks phenomenal. Let's do it with the other one. See, it's not it's not too hard. In Simplify 3D, when you hold the model on the Mac here, I just hold down the command key and that allows me to move it. There we go. So that's in. Let's zoom out. Make sure we're even. Oh yeah, look at that. We are even. Oop, this one isn't. See? Ooh. Now we're even. Oh, we're so even. This is this is fantastic. All right. In Simplify 3D, we have four models, but in essence, we're going to be printing two models. So in this first process, we're going to call it the back halves, and we're going to set it on the left extruder. The layering and and everything like that, I'm not I'm not too worried about because I'm not I'm not showing you how to configure a layer. I'm showing you how to print with a dual extruder with multiple models. So I'm going to select models. Let's see. Let's clear this, and then I'm going to take the back models and hit OK. Now I need to add a process. I'm going to call this process front, and it's going to be the right extruder. See the right extruder. So what I can do here, select models, and I'm going to select the front models. Hit OK. And now I'm going to hit print. It's saying I have multiple processes. Well, I want them to both print at the same time. So I'm going to choose continuous printing layer by layer. Uh, let's see. The selected process is not configured for the number of extruders you've chosen to use. Oh, you know what? OK. Here's where it gets interesting. I do need to choose both extruders. That's right. Okay. Sorry about that. I do need to choose both extruders on this one. And then in the back, I need to choose the left extruder and the infill, the left extruder and the support left extruder if we, if we do that. Okay. So now on the front, we choose both extruders and the right and the right. Okay, now we're configured correctly. Sorry about that. So both selected, continuous printing layer by layer, and hit OK. Simplify 3D is going to chew on it a little bit, and then it's going to produce this. Now, I I have a raft configured. Never mind about that. That's not what you want to pay attention to. This is where it starts to get... Oh, you know what? <laughs> okay, this is interesting. So this is a new model of Simplify 3D, and it's putting up a a um, an ooze shield around the models. So let's let's go back, let's take the raft off, and in additions, let's take off the ooze shield. Now, normally you could print with an ooze shield, and it would it would it's kind of cool. It allows for the colors not to mix where they shouldn't. Okay, we've taken off the ooze shield. And we've configured it so that there was no raft. And now here we see our parts. Oh, if you look, see the parts? They're not as close together as they should be. You can see right here, the parts, how they, they print, they're, they're kind of inset, but they're not close enough. So using the mouse, let's see. Let's just move it one click in. And over here. Let's move it one click in. I think that's close enough. It's kind of an interesting process being able to do this. It's it's not the easiest thing in the world, but it was worth it and it worked. Okay. Let's do it again. Well, that's pretty close. We can we can obviously we can get them a little bit closer. Uh, but but the idea here is using multiple processes on two different models that have intersecting parts means that you're going to get, uh, let's see, feature type, active tool head. There we go. 
So having this on individual parts means that you're going to get these really cool prints. So here's, it's both, it's laying out and now see it had the, the green, it left a space and now the blue is, is printing over in that space for a couple layers. And then the blue will leave a space. Let's see, the blue leaves a space right there. And then the green starts printing on that layer. And because it's plastic and because it's all melting together, it works really, really well. We get some very, very strong models that, that don't break and they appear and feel as a single printed piece. It's actually, it's actually really cool. So, so there you go. It's kind of an interesting way to do it. I, I did film this in a time lapse, so let's see that. Are you ready? Time lapse. Well, hey, that was neat. I hope you found that valuable. I know I rushed through OpenSCAD and Simplify 3D kind of quickly, but but I, I hope you got a general idea of what I was trying to do, where I was taking the two pieces and putting them together so that the plastic overlaid on one another, and that provided the strength for these to be solid pieces and not just fall apart. I found it very interesting, and it's almost like building in a dovetail joint, but but in plastic virtually. Thanks again for watching. Put a, put a big thumbs up on this video if you found it informative or interesting. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the process that I might be able to answer. Share this video with your friends. Uh, subscribe. Please subscribe to my channel. I was just checking my statistics and of all my video views, less than half are from subscribed people. More than half are from people that have not subscribed to my channel. And I would I would love to get you to subscribe to my channel. That would be that would be fantastic. So if you get the chance and you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. Also, I've got affiliate links down in the description. Those help out the channel. You can do your normal shopping through printedsolid.com or amazon.com. And when you go using the links in the description, it throws a, a few Scooby Snacks my way. And that goes a long way in helping the channel sustain itself. Of course, I need to thank my patrons who support me through Patreon.com. The dollar or so a month you give me goes a long way, and clicking up there will let you support me through Patreon.com as well. Just know, of course, this content will always be free, as long as I can make it free, and I will give exclusives to patrons, but, but again, this channel will always be here. I don't require any money. Please, just socially high-five me. Well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. As always, high five.